where you need to show a product or geographic breakdown of financial results. I'm going to suggest in this video that you use a bar chart that has related data underneath it instead of the typical pie or donut chart. And this is a very common way that organizations show product or geographic breakdown. Here are a couple of examples from the medical device or pharmaceutical industry. And one is a donut, one is a pie chart. I want to focus in on this particular portion of one of those visuals where we see a breakdown by both product category as well as geography in our two pie charts at the top. But then there's additional information in the tables down below. Whenever you have additional information that is not part of the visual or part of the chart, it makes it hard for the audience to be able to connect those two. And so what I'm going to suggest instead is we create a bar chart that has all of the information, the breakdown of the segments visually, as well as the rest of the information in terms of the actual millions of dollars and the year over year change, all in one visual. And we start by preparing the data for our graph. And this is the data table that I'm using to create the graph. And a few things to point out here. First of all, the very first data series called row label in the visual that you see there, that is a data series to hold the labels for the table down below. We're going to not use the vertical axis. We're going to use this. Uh, it's going to be an invisible segment in the stacked bar chart. And we're going to put the labels in there. This gives us a lot more control over exactly the formatting of the chart. Secondly, we have separated all of the data into different data series. Now there's a group of data series for the bar segments. Those are the first two rows. And then there's a group of data series for the data that's going to be positioned below each of those segments. And the reason we do it into separate data series is because it makes the formatting a lot easier when we build the chart. You'll notice that I have two rows at the top, not just one row. I have two rows because it makes those bar segments taller. That gives it more presence. It also allows for a two line label, which there is one of the labels that is going to be two lines. It gives it enough space without it running outside of the actual bar segments. The data series names that are going to be used for the bars are actually data labels that include a colon. And the reason that's done is because the data label is going to include both the series name as well as the value, and that colon will be the separator. Finally, on the far right hand side, you'll notice there are some specific labels being created. These are custom data labels that contain the information that's going to be put into that table down below the actual segments in our bar chart. And the reason we set that up over there is these custom labels, we can format them exactly the way we want them to be. And the other thing is the actual values of the, the space that's being used to contain them are percentages. They're not actually these values, so we couldn't use those as data labels anyways. And this is the visual that we create. It has the bars at the top, which uh, each of those segments represents the percentage for each of those particular product categories. And then down below, we have each of the additional pieces of information with the correct number for each of those groups. So this is a stacked bar chart. The entire thing is a stacked bar chart. It is not a table or a set of text boxes down below. It's all part of the stacked bar chart. The gap width is set to 0%. What that means is, is that the top two bars merge together because there's no space. The gap is the space between the bars. At zero, there's no space. So it merges and makes this nice tall bar at the top. And you'll notice for the diabetes segment on the far right hand side, because it's two lines, it easily fits within this taller bar, which is really two bars. There are no vertical horizontal axes on this particular bar chart because they wouldn't make any sense. Uh, we want to control all the formatting and not have those automatic axes there. The segments for the row labels on the left hand side and the segments for all of the table segments down below those bars 
are set to be invisible. And the way we do that is we just simply set the fill color to be no fill. Quite easy to do that. And it gives us now correctly positioned invisible segments where we can place data labels into it. We format each of the bars with the appropriate colors based on the corporate color scheme. This is close to their corporate color scheme. And then we add the data labels. So the data labels in the visible bars are, as I said before, the series name plus the value. Now that means it's going to have a data label in both of those rows. So it's actually two data labels. We just delete the bottom one because we only need one of them. And then we have labels in these uh, invisible segments, which we draw from those cells. This is a feature that was added in Excel 2013, where you can create the data labels from a different set of cells. So everything you see below those segmented bars, that those labels are drawn from other cells other than the value that's being used to create it. So we're using some advanced thought here and techniques to be able to create space in a chart that we will then put labels in that are exactly what we want them to be. So when you have to present the product or geographic breakdown of financial results, consider using a stacked bar chart. Stacked bar chart where one part of that chart actually looks like a table. Yes, there is a stacked bar chart, but the rest of it looks like a table. And our example here showed us where we can have the segments that represent the percentages, but then the related information is right underneath. This makes it so much easier for the audience to be able to relate that information to the segment, and it doesn't separate it as we saw in the original where they had a, a set of pie charts at the top and then a set of tables down below. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.